Hello and uh, welcome to this tutorial. My name is George Kingsnorth. The purpose behind this tutorial is to introduce students on the BTEC Extended Diploma Level 3 in Creative Media Production who are doing Unit 16 Film and Video Editing Techniques. So to start off with, when you open up Final Cut Pro first and begin a new project, you will find yourself with something like this in front of you. We have the browser, which is now selected which shows the different projects that are currently there. I have this project with just a single sequence that has only just been started, so there are no video clips in it. And I have a, a full feature film in this project, which is showing audio uh, bins with various different animated clips, a number of different sequences, and again, a whole load of pre-edits that I've done. If I double click on them, they'll open up in the timeline and then I've actually nested them together in the Compilation 2 sequence. And that is effectively an 83 minutes 30 second feature film that's actually in the timeline. So again, back to the browser. So you can actually see that we have audio clips, we have video clips, we have bins that contain, in this case, a selection of audio files. We have other bins that um, contain music, this bin here shows the number of days that we were actually filmed in the first year of shooting this. And in each of these, there are bins containing audio and other bins containing video. On um, this particular project, the material was captured on a digital SLR using an SD card. So we just imported them straight from the SD card after backing up. So we'll go into further detail about how to set these up. At the moment, it's just to give you an overview of what we're actually looking at. The other tab on the end here is an effects tab where you can access and drag on to your project transitions between two cuts, zooms, relative effects, and we'll go into those in more detail when we actually apply them to specific projects, but those will be in later tutorials. So that's effectively the browser. The other thing that's useful in the browser, and if we go into one of our rushes bins with the audio, is if I drag this out, you'll see that there's a load of data going from the duration that the clip lasts, the in, the out point, where the media starts and where it ends. Uh, the in and out points is where there are mark in and mark out, um, which can be shorter than the, the actual duration. For example, this clip here, there is a, a mark set in at six seconds. So of the one minute 48 seconds clip, there is just a duration of 142. We can tell that the, the audio is in stereo, that it is 1440 by 1080, 25 frames per second. We can see what the compressor is. And again, if I move this along, we can eventually see, well, there's no real in this one because it wasn't actually captured off video, but we can see the date that it was actually captured, which is on the 12th of August, 2009. So that's information you can find in the browser. Now going on from the browser, we'll go to the viewer here. To add things to the viewer, you simply double click and that will actually put your clip into the viewer. You can scroll along and see what's actually happening there. In this case, we have another tab which shows you the video. We have a second tab showing the audio in stereo uh, with a few controls. Again, the duration, where the actual playhead is. And at the moment, it's on frame nine. Pan controls, so we can actually go left and right volume controls, so we can add gain. If we choose, we can actually add a keyframe at that point, change the volume, and then we've added another keyframe. Bring that down, so. Um, so we're adding keyframes, and we can change the volume of the clip. Let's just play it for you. If we're not happy with that, we can reset it all, and everything's back to where it was. So that's the reset button. This button here allows you to drag the clip either onto the timeline, as you can see. And again, I try to dissuade people from doing that because there are other controls on the canvas that allow you to actually edit your piece into the timeline. But let's go back. We can rewind that clip or fast forward the clip. We can add a mark in at either end of the clip. We can add in a um, keyframe 
or a marker. We can add in marking points which is here or on the keyboard using I and mark out using this button here or O. This button here allows us to go to the previous cut. The one at the other end allows us to go to the last cut. This button allows us to play between the mark in and mark out point. And this is our simple play, which will actually play the whole clip. And this will play around the clip. Notice it didn't go th to the full extent, it's just playing around it. And this control here allows you just to jog to choose the exact frame you might want to actually use. Down here we can actually select our clip and if we have several clips in there, let's just add another clip in there. We can now go to a range of clips that we've just been using. There we go. And swap between them. Just here we can add bars and that changes that to the bars and tone. Okay, we'll go back to my clip. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this video clip here and double click and we're going to introduce you now to the canvas. As I've got my piece in there we put a mark in and a mark out I can now either click on this button which is the insert button and it'll actually put it into my timeline. We haven't produced anything in there and at the moment the uh, clip is not the same at the, um, settings as the actual timeline so I'm just going to go click yes and that should now load that into the timeline which we can see. And If I zoom in we can that dark area is just a single frame so basically I've got nine frames in the timeline. It doesn't last very long. Okay. So, so at this point we're being introduced to the timeline as we mess around with the canvas. We have several buttons that we can use to edit material in. So I'm just putting another little in and out point just there. I can click on the red one which is insert, go back to the previous edit and then if I choose another little clip, let's say just here, mark in and out, I can now either insert this between those two clips that I have in the timeline by using this button which is actually inserted between the two previous clips or if I go command Z undo that if I use the red button it will now overwrite the material and again undo that one here we have a range of other options to either replace, superimpose, uh, fit to fill, uh, insert with transition and overwrite with transition. Okay. Now you may notice that on here we have the likes of superimpose if you it would suggest you press F12. One of the difficulties is that um, pressing F12 is the volume control on a Mac um, and so it won't actually perform the function that you need so you need to change the function keys but we'll not deal with that here. There we go, my sound is going up. So again we've we looked in the viewer there's the in and out, the marker, the keyframe, the uh, mark clip, so it's actually marked the clip in the timeline and the other useful tool is um, the other useful tool is if you want to match frame you can set up where your frame is and say you want to match that frame there if you click on this button it will match the frame up in the viewer for you just there okay again we have our frame by frame scrub control there or we have a fast backwards and fast forward in the timeline we can see that there are a number of sequences open so we can click on there and see, choose which sequence we want to actually work on. Okay. Now, in the viewer we had one video and a stereo track on one and two. So in the timeline here, the editing that I've just added in there 
I had my channel 1 selected, I had my channel 1 and 2 audio selected. So video 1 was selected and audio 1 and 2 were selected. Now if let's say we want to add another clip and let's clear our marking in and out. But this time we want the channel 1 and 2 audio to go into channel A3 and A4. So we simply move these uh, channels so they match up to channel 3 and 4. So this is setting up where the destination of, of those clips goes. And if we now add that clip again, but using a slightly different technique, we'll drag this over into the canvas. I can insert, I can overwrite, either with a transition and all those other things I just showed you with the buttons just here. Okay. So as opposed to just clicking here and adding, you could actually drag it across and do an insert. And now we can see that because I've changed the destination channels of one audio 1 and audio 2 to audio 3 and 4 in the timeline, it's now put them onto those. Let's just show you what happens if we go for an overwrite with transition. It's now added a transition. Now let's make that clip very long. We'll reduce that transition. That's basically just a fade, so I'll just play it for you. Okay. Okay, so the clips aren't very long, so we can't really appreciate the transition. So I'm just going to drag that across and I'm just going to do an overwrite. Drag out my timeline. And this time with the transition, so we'd put the with transition, and you'll now see that there is roughly a second cross mix picture wise and sound wise. Okay, in the timeline we've looked again at the channel selection. We can actually switch off the video, so you can't see the video. That's all you're hearing now is the audio, and you can see that's gone black. Or we can switch off selected channels. If we play that back from here, it's now gone mute on those two channels that we're playing here. Switch those back on. We can also lock those channels so that we can't edit them. And you'll see that I'm using the blade tool so I, I can add cuts in there but it's not affecting the audio. Now, let's just unlock the audio for the time being. What we also have in the timeline here is, that would show me the keyframes if there was any keyframes in there. So let's just add a couple of keyframes. Okay, so we're just adding a few keyframes in that. So what that's actually showing me is where the keyframes are in that piece. I can move them around if I want. I'll switch those off. The other useful one is this one, which is showing you the overlay um, we can see our rubber bands, the pink lines here, and here we can add more keyframes and then manipulate the sound using the pen. So we can add dips into the sound. We can also change the width of the clips that we view in the timeline. I find it quite useful as that one. If you can see the actual video clip uh, frame of the first frame of the clip there, it can actually use up your memory. So I often switch that off by going to settings and going to the timeline options and change that from name plus thumbnail to just the name and you can see that's now disappeared. And the reason I do that in this project is I'm using high definition. So there again are some of the features there. Let's go back to the settings.
there's another little feature there that is the film strip and that would show virtually a good selection of frames but again that would slow down the process quite a bit so I tend not to use that much either okay so that's a very quick view of the timeline this little uh, item here shows you the it's the audio monitor which allows you to see whether the audio is peaking or not and if we just drag this up so we over two things if the line was to peak to zero and the red lights come on you'd actually get distortion on your audio track so it's useful to be able to control your audio so you can actually bring it down to somewhere between minus 6 and minus 12 peaking basically now the other tool feature is this one here which shows you a range of tools but we'll go through these in another tutorial when we need to show you how to do different types of edit a zoom in and a zoom out scroll button again that can be achieved by going command plus to zoom in or command minus on the keyboard to zoom out a couple of other little features that are useful to you let's go to the canvas is here that you can see these green lines and that's the title safe area so if you wanted any titles they should be within inside this box um, because the television tends to have a, a cutoff area and you can access those through here or switch them off and it's best to actually have those in so you've got the title safe so you can actually make sure you know what the view will actually see and what might be cut off we can also add time code overlay so we can actually run and see what time code is is being displayed and that will come back as I stop the play Now that could be useful because you might want to find a piece of time code that you want to go back and recapture a clip from at some point and the final one shows you whether there's excess luminance or not there's bright sky just there and you get the zebras saying that actually they're green this little tick is actually indicating that that's safe and it's not bleached out too much what we will try and do is see if we can mess around with that briefly and see if we can burn that out and to do that we just had a fit had a an effect to that clip and we just had the go to the filters so what we've done is we've had a filter and by increasing the brightness you can now see that we've actually created the red so that wouldn't be broadcast safe anymore and we'll play around with the contrast so you can see how you can play around with filters on there here we go red lines as get again back to where it was so we can take that out so that's a filter in the in the in the viewer. Select there and go backspace and that'll delete the filter. That's just a very, very quick overview of the browser, the viewer, the canvas and the timeline. In future video tutorials we'll show you how to capture and start to do a very simple edit using Final Cut Pro. Thank you.